Look at that. All right, guys, it's the moment I've been waiting for. I'm pretty happy about this. Check it out. All right, ready? Drum roll, please. Wow! Look at that scout, man. Oh, it's been so long. This is the first time that I've got it actually in my garage. Like, it has not. It's been at my grandpa's, tucked away almost a year. But there it is, man. It looks so tiny in here compared to those K5s. You don't realize how little this thing is, but gosh, I'm so ready. So, first order of business. We gotta get that four cylinder out of here. And not because it's bad, it's because, well, it's no good. It's locked up, it's stuck. Then, we're gonna get the, you remember the video I did where I put the front seat in it and everything? Well, I've got the feel for it. I know what it feels like. We're gonna remove that, get that, out of here and put up over there we're going to remove this floor mat and find out really what do i have because you know you get excited you buy something i know i looked it over i already knew what i got into i knew that the bed floor was gone you know i knew that i had some rust here big deal who cares but the wedges the cap mounts the rockers all that stuff's really good on this it does have a little bit of rust in the aprons here that we can fix but like it's not bad so let me get to the next point of my next idea. So I met a new friend. His name's Drew. And I actually, that's where I got the engine and transmission out of his 70. His is a 75 or 76. But so what we're going to do, we're going to get all this stuff out. And we're going to fix the exhaust, fix some oil leaks, weld up that little hole that I, you know, put in the oil pan. And we're going to put this in there. I don't know if it runs yet. I've got the right there. Let me see is the two barrel holly that we're gonna put on it. We're gonna rebuild that and put it on, but yeah, we're gonna put this whole mix down in there to see if we can get it to run. Now, I do need a Scout 2 rear drive shaft. I've got the front shaft from the setup that was in. I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. I actually have the shifter was laying in here for a Dana 20, so that'll work, but I need the rear drive shaft. So, any of you guys have any leads on that, It'll just be the factory style rear drive shaft. But we're gonna get this thing, we're gonna see if this engine runs in the vehicle instead of on a stand. And I mean, I'm pumped. Yeah, it needs some work and stuff, but we're gonna go ahead and start on getting this floor out, getting what I need patched up here in the floor, and we're just gonna send it. Like, again, I've never owned one of these, I've never driven one, I've never ridden in one, and I'm ready to drive this thing. Like, this is, I got, I got to do it. I can't wait. I don't want to take the body. I mean, I want to. I don't want to completely restore it. I want to get it running and get on the road because I want to have fun with my family. And like a total restoration is going to take me five years. And by then, all those good memories are down the drain. So between this and the blazer, we're going to catch some fish. We're going to go on some good road trips. We got to get some crap running around here. So uh, let's get after it. What's cracking, guys? Got a little free time at home. Started on this. I made the mistake of taking the fuel pump all apart before I checked the orientation, how it's supposed to go and read any direction. So that stuff's in a bag and I said, ah, I don't feel like messing with that. So I'm gonna start on this. I've already got the hood up. I've got to get the hood off because we're pulling the engine out of it first thing. So uh, let me show you what I got. So it looks like I'm getting to the cart before the horse, but I've got the engine hoist out and I'm by myself. So. What I decided to do, I already got the bolts out of it aside from one, I don't know if you can see, on each corner. And I took a large panduit strap, like you would put ductwork together with, and used the engine hoist. So I'm kind of thinking about, that's supporting the top of the hood. I'm gonna pull these bolts and I should be able just to roll this back and then lower it down and put the bolts back in and I can lean it up on the wall. So let's see if this works.
that didn't work as good as I thought it would. I figured that strap would hold a little bit more weight, but uh, it didn't, but I saved the hood just in time. So yeah, it's off there now. I'm gonna go through, and again, it doesn't have a transmission or nothing in it. So I'm gonna get a chain, remove that air cleaner, and start detaching things that I know, like the power steering pump, I'll pull it to the side. Just start taking everything out I don't need. I'll remove the radiator, heater hoses. Just first one thing and two, this should come out pretty easy. I chopped the exhaust off of it. So that'll be the next move is we'll start disassembling this and try to get this engine out of here. Good morning. So last little video you saw us take the hood off. So now let's check it out. So I've removed the alternator, went and got an old chain, got that out of the way. And it looks like these have Chevrolet style alternators. Again, sharing a lot of the same characteristics with a tractor. That's for that off the V8 motor. That's off four cylinder. I'm gonna save it anyways. So yeah, my next thing is I gotta get this wiring harness off of the engine, and get it pulled back up here out of the way. And then we're gonna get this chain fastened and then we're gonna have to see if this has got any antifreeze in it. And like, look at these old stickers, man. This is so, so cool. And then look at this, man. International was not playing around. Notice, do not drain. Cooling system is protected to 20 degrees below with IH permanent antifreeze. So either they weren't playing around or they knew this thing was gonna rust out before it ever even made it very far. But yeah, I do got a little rust on the apron right here I'm going to have to fix. You just, that's just the game on these old things, man. You can't, it's hard to find any of these old cars now with running on 50 years old without any rust. So I'm going to go ahead and get this harness off and then try to get the other side of the chain hooked up. I think I'm going to put it back here up where the bell housing was. next thing up is this power steering pump which again looks like GM stuff so we're gonna pull the whole bracketry off of that I got the chain on and then I'm sure the starter wiring and I have to get the soles all out to cut the exhaust off and then this thing should be ready to try to pull out of here we'll see if it's got any of that antifreeze in it I'll tell you what this power steering bracket is on there I'm gonna slide underneath here Oh, got to get that bolt right there out so we can get that power steering bracket to come off. But I have to say, this is a well put together rig, man. International had it going on. Very well put together. All right, we've got our engine hoist in place. We just have to cut the exhaust off and get the uh, starter wire off the starter. This thing's ready to come out. I know, I know. I kind of wanted to see if this thing might break loose or whatever, but the more signs I see, the more it doesn't look like it's going to. Look at that. Now, the story was the guy I bought it from said this thing had a rod hanging through the side of it, but I... Haven't seen anything of that yet, but we're gonna find out because we gotta do the motor mounts and this motor's coming out. All right, guys, it is out. The little four cylinder is, it's out on the ground. I don't see, oh boy, that's a little crooked. I don't see anywhere where he said that thing might have a hole in the side of it. 
Let's see if we can look up in here. I don't see any windows in the block. We're gonna pull a few parts. I'm gonna remove the starter, these motor mount plates, probably pull the fuel pump. I know the valve cover and the cylinder head's the same. I'm gonna keep the valve cover, but just various brackets I don't need, or that I will need, I'm sorry. But yeah, super awesome to get this out of here. Got to chop the rest of the exhaust off and get that fuel tank out. I guess it's time to clean this puppy up. Got a little rust repair up here to do. But all in all, not too bad. Not too shabby. So I thought I'd do a side-by-side -side comparison. This is the 196 cubic inch four-cylinder that came out of this. Funny thing that I've just learned is the cylinder head on this four cylinder is the exact same cylinder head, I believe, that goes on a 304 or a 345 V8 like this one. Now, this is the engine I have to put into the Scout. This is the one that came out. Now, you're gonna ask yourself, well, why didn't you try to get the four cylinder to go? Well, this thing is locked up and stuck very badly. So let's pull. Oh yeah. I'm really not sure if this thing would have ran. The guy I got it from said the block was windowed. It had a busted block. But I have seen nowhere on this motor where it is busted at all. It's got a block heater in it. But I don't see any damage to the motor. Now if this thing was all complete together, transmission, everything was in it, I would have for darn sure try to get this to run but this thing is stuck and it has got a lot of corrosion in it so i am going to just throw this away so this is the 345 ih v8 this came out of another scout exactly like this one that i'm going to be putting back in it now i don't know if it runs but like everybody i wanted to put the ls engine in it but I don't know, I'm ready for something different. I already have something that's got an LS engine in it. And I don't know, I just wanna work on something different. So if I could have found another four cylinder, I would have put that back in there, but I'm I'm just cost effective. Whatever is the most cost conscious is what I'm gonna do. So, but I thought you guys would get a kick out of it. I mean, the valve covers are identical. The cylinder head is identical. But this thing is the size of a 454 Chevy. I don't know how it's gonna fit in here, but it does. And I think the motor mounts are the same and everything, so. But I thought you guys would get a kick out of that. But that, and I apologize for my lighting in here, but. But yeah, pretty neat little deal, man. I'm learning with you guys. I don't know anything about these. All I know is they're cool and I like them, so. So I figured I'd give you guys a little underhood inspection. Let's uh, do like a rust check. Let's see what this thing looks like without no motor. All right, all right. So she is gutted out. There's no more anything in here. Now this is a 1976 power brakes, power steering, Dan 44s. Still got some of the cool stickers on it. All in all, I think this truck is in pretty phenomenal shape compared to the most of the scouts and stuff. Most, I haven't got to look at very many cause they're not that common, but I mean, so far they're looking pretty solid. The proportioning block, our aprons look pretty nice. Up here where the battery goes, you can expect a little bit of rot. I've knocked some of that out. Should be able to weld in some metal and fix that. That shouldn't be too bad. I removed the radiator. Let's look at the jack handle. Or the sticker, I'm sorry. But yeah, man, it's looking pretty darn solid. Heater box. Now we do have a little bit of that rust action going on down here which is pretty typical but the floors in this thing 
not the worst I've ever seen. Now we're going to go ahead and chop this exhaust system off and take it out, get rid of it. But like just some light cleaning and restoration will have this engine bay looking pretty sweet. What's a sticker right here? It shows all the emissions decals. After a year and a half, it's pretty nice to actually get to work on this. Got the IH logo on the washer bottle or overflow tank. I don't know which one that is yet. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. All right, guys. So if you like what's going on here, hit that subscribe button. And our next move, we're going to pull the gas tank out. Try to get it. It's got some varnished gas in it. It smells horrible horrible so uh, we're gonna wait for the rain to ease up before we roll it outside and do that and then we're gonna remove the front seat and the carpeting or the floor mat and we're gonna go from there but uh yeah hit that like button subscribe and uh we'll get some more work done